We all have memories of 9-11. It could be that you're the age I am where you remember where you were, what you were doing, and like myself, you were watching it live on television when it happened. But actually, the story I want to tell you, for me, 9-11 started six years before that in 1995. I had an opportunity to work on a video project in New York City. It's the first time I ever got to go to New York City, and I was really excited about that. And again, this is pre-9-11. I can remember driving from Newark Airport in New Jersey to get to Manhattan, looking across the water and seeing those Twin Towers. That was just something that was amazing, how tall they were. You know, I pulled out some papers, and one of those is the map I had. These are maps before GPS, if you remember. And I had no idea really how New York looked and what it was. I'm being from New York. And after we had been working on a video project, my friend and I, Richard, we got the opportunity to ride with the New York City Fire Department. So we got to go into Queens. And again, the year was 1995. This was May of 1995. And they sent us to a particular engine house that had a battalion chief that we would ride with, a ladder company and truck company. And it was... I would say it was probably one of their showpieces at the time because it had the new Seagrave fire engines and ladder trucks, same ones that you would see later on 9-11. You know, I think my favorite call we went on, which was really a nothing call, it was a call about loud explosions and I thought this is going to be something and it turned out really not to be what I thought it was. Aerial bombs. It's the mortars. Aerial bombs. Firework. Make it a 1092. I don't see anything. It was nice having another cameraman with me there in New York. And, you know, so I could prove I was really there, really recording what was going on. I was kind of excited because the turnouts I had were the same ones New York City firefighters had. In fact, over my shoulder, those are the actual turnouts that I wore in 1995 to New York City. So I came back in June of 1995 and I rode with an engine company and ladder company and even a battalion chief in the Bronx. Uh, the apparatus was what I called the old colors and the old look back in the day. When I was in that engine house, I got to immerse myself in the culture of New York City firefighting. Stay in the art gas grill. Um, <laughs> spend some time with the guys, watching them do what they do, just cooking, hanging around the engine house. Just breaking up lettuce in my diesel soap cans. The guys digested. It was a little bit slow that day, and the battalion chief said, hey, why not take you on a tour of New York City? I thought, well, why not? We're not doing anything. So we got in his uh, big vehicle, he and the chauffeur, and driving around. New York City and, and the history and the firefighting. Now, I was going to this as an extra chief on a multiple alarm. Uh, Kevin and I would get this come up, print out the message of who's there, so then when we get to the scene, we can set up a command post a communication center and keep track of every company that's there already. He had a very detailed knowledge of the building structures in the area. It was interesting to hear him talk about them. Every vacant lot you see here was a building at one time within the past 20 years and has burnt down and collapsed. It's been torn down because of fire damage. It's hard to imagine every lot here was one of those buildings across the street. And it's uh, remarkable the number of dwellings they've lost here. And he took me to Yankee Stadium. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Babe. I mean, that's where it was and got to walk around there and see that uh, in a unique way coming through kind of the back door of it. I mean, just simple things like box alarms. I got to see some of the sights that I've only seen on television. That was pretty neat. Went by parts of Central Park. Yeah, I didn't get everything on camera, but as we were driving around New York City, the same battalion chief began talking about how he had been at the first bombing. The first bombing was in 1993. So here we are in 1995. He said, you know, they try to blow it up from down below. I remember him pointing toward them and he just said, you know, you can't bring these towers down from down below. You know, I don't know how they're gonna do it. He said, you need a tanker truck, one that's like loaded with fuel. You know, the way they're built and how they're structured, he said, as soon as 
it weakens because of the fire, the heat of the fire, they'll start coming down one floor at a time on top of each other. He said it'll look like a demolition if it ever happened. But he said, I have no idea how you would get a tanker truck up there. That's why I say 9-11 for me started in 1995. There's so many crazy conspiracy theories about 9-11. But what I heard in 1995 was just facts. What will happen in a fire? And at some point, structures do collapse, and even the World Trade Center did. But the real heroes were the ones that went up the stairs knowing how catastrophic the fire was. I had the opportunity to ride with the New York City Fire Department. I think about those brave souls. I think about what kind of individual it takes to be a firefighter, and particularly a New York City firefighter, and the sacrifice they made, their families made, and so many on that day, September 11th, 2001.